In this essay, I present how I engage with my ethical position in designing with my own bodily fluids, and more specifically, with milk for my breastfeeding relationship. This is through performative texts that revisit moments of discomfort to unpack how I navigate potential harm and how I speculate about ethical possibilities for interaction design. This research is of importance for HCI at the intersection of designing with biomaterials, more than human entanglements, and the ethics of first-person research. In early 2020, I began designing with and for bodily fluids, such as knitting bras for lopsided breasts and transforming milk into fiddling necklaces. My process has included setting up breast pump equipment at the office to express milk for my child, measuring an expired bottle of milk at home to mix with preserving powder bought online, casting our solidified milk and resin, making case in plastic with cow's milk by following online recipes from kids STEM experiments, and exhibiting material experiments at work to colleagues. I understand research ethics to be relational within a feminist ethics of care. This contrasts from procedural ethics that are often granted within universal principles and moral authority. In researching my breastfeeding experiences, I have frequent discussions with my partner, who is also my child's father and co-caretaker, and receive consent from myself and him. This includes speculating on how our child and him and I might feel in the future. In researching human milk in Sweden, the Swedish Ethical Review Authority requires formal approval of research performed on biological material from a living human if it can be traced back to that person. It does not acknowledge first-person methods or felt experiences of it as a design material. Also, approval must be obtained before research begins, which is difficult relative to uncertainties of breastfeeding. In response to shortcomings of procedural ethics, I create and rehearse performative texts in which the words themselves also perform through visual and spatial compositions. As performances, they are less about accuracy and more about the associated emotions that come from recreating situations. As performative, the words are a discursive material in understanding relations among bodies of text and bodies of fluids. This process was inspired by a PhD course on autoethnographic methods by Annette Markham and Lisbeth Frulund. In the paper, I present three performative texts. A first performative text revisits a time when I used a chemical agent purchased online to solidify our milk at home without him and her. The results turn it into a very fine powder called Mommy Love Dust. It resulted in emotional distress as I notice in panic that it's smoking and this smells. My panic was situated in not knowing how maybe it will linger or be materially shared with her in subsequent milk production despite my attempts to don't breathe, hold, breathe over there. I chose to revisit this moment because it was a time when I felt my design work could be of material harm to my child, my partner, and myself. In verbally performing the text, the first page felt as dense as it looks. The composition radically shifts on the second page. My bracketed thoughts are spatially distributed and written in various directions. This accentuates unclear beginnings and endings of when and where material harm might take place. From this text, I call for support in designing within everyday unsafe spaces that acknowledges how bodily fluids travel and perform as biological and social materials. This means that separating research spaces as safe risks neglecting the people, context, and materials that our milk and our bodies interact with as we move between places. I argue for more consideration given to how the experiences of spaces inform how meaning is made in designing with bodily fluids. A second performative text revisits two different encounters during the same academic event. On the left is the first, and to the right is the second. The top page is a description of each scene, and the bottom page is conversations. In the first encounter, a group of researchers were discussing something else, yet the focus transitions to the beginning of the end for me, upon being asked an unrelated question about breastfeeding that left me feeling angry. In the other encounter, I was meeting with a researcher to knowingly discuss a paper I was writing on breastfeeding. I received the feedback, I don't think you are saying what you really want to say. 
I realized the delineation between what I wanted to keep closed and what I wanted to open was surprisingly unfinished and messy to myself. I chose to revisit these encounters because I didn't feel good about sharing my breastfeeding experiences as research at this time. In verbally performing the text, I read the descriptions and then the dialogues. This accentuated the separation of scene and conversation and a vulnerability in not knowing when or where I might be asked a challenging question. From this text, I call for situated escapes that support pausing, abandoning, and altering research plans. While academic expectations might provide structure to PhD students such as myself, they might also be difficult to align with vulnerabilities and sharing. This necessitates recognizing temporalities of bodily fluids and their felt impact on research decisions within windows of opportunity to share and not share. A third performative text revisits when I received reviews for a publication on breastfeeding and was asked to add a content warning to my paper and video presentation. The single page of text is a series of lines that alternate between what I perceive as mostly positive and what troubles me. The positive aspects include recognizing it is from care and love and indicate that my voice should be heard. The negative aspects include the notion of a content warning, my struggle in understanding what it clarifies, and my worry in how my child will interpret it in the future. I chose to revisit this moment because I felt and feel conflicted in adding the content warning at the beginning and unsure whether I should continue to include it. In performing the text, I wasn't sure how to proceed, read all together, the top first or the bottom first. The folds seem to represent divisions between dealing with the present and speculating about the future. But there's also a possible peeking and reading in between the lines that hint at my frustration in censoring something by saying too much. From this text, I call for how HCI might welcome an ethics of censored inclusion that does not suppress possible relations and instead welcomes creative practices in which censorship is about lively inclusion. To be clear, I'm not advocating against content warnings altogether, but rather questioning when, where, and how they are put into practice.